Our reading today is two excerpts from John O'Donohue's book, Eternal Echoes, Celtic Reflections on Our Yearning to Belong. Perhaps your hunger to belong is always active and intense because you belonged so totally before you came here. This hunger to belong is the echo and reverberation of your invisible heritage. You are from somewhere else where you are known, embraced, and sheltered. This is also the secret root from which all longing grows. Something in you knows, perhaps, remembers that eternal belonging liberates longing into its surest and most potent creativity. This is why your longing is often wiser than your conventional sense of appropriateness, safety, and truth. Your longing desires to take you toward the absolute realization of all the possibilities that sleep in the clay of your heart. It knows your eternal potential, and it will not rest until it is awakened. The restlessness in the human heart will never be finally stilled by any person, project, or place. The longing is eternal. This is what constantly qualifies and enlarges our circle of belonging. Without the shelter of belonging, our longings would lack direction, focus, context. They'd be aimless and haunted, constantly tugging the heart in a myriad of opposing directions. Without belonging, our longing would be demented. As memory gathers and anchors time, so does belonging shelter longing. Belonging without longing would be empty, a cold frame around emptiness. One often notices this in relationships where longing is gone. They have become arrangements. There is no longer any shared or vital presence, because when longing dies, creativity ceases, and the arduous task of being human is to balance longing and belonging so that they work with and against each other to ensure that all the potential and gifts that sleep in that clay of the heart may be awakened and realized in this one life. How do we belong here? How do we make this a place of belonging, where our longings can find direction and come to fruition? I find myself deeply moved by the question of belonging, and my heart aches when I hear people who feel the answer is always out of reach. And I want to tell everyone, do you know that you belong here? How will you make this place of your belonging? Which could be great in theory, but in reality, it seems there's a lot more to finding belonging than wanting to belong, though that is where it starts. In this fall season of transition, as school years begin and some people move into new living spaces, something many of us may have encountered on our way here, and as evenings begin earlier and cool faster, the search for belonging begins anew. I do have to stop myself for a moment, though, because I'm talking a lot about belonging, and it would probably be helpful to get on the same page 
about what me, we mean by belonging. But I found that there's a catch to that. Yes, there are many wise thoughts and tenets about the qualities of belonging, and they are a quick Google search away. You'll find a bunch of amazing TED Talks and lectures about it. But even the people who come up with these tenets, like Karen Taylor, who's a leader in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging strategy in the workplace, and yes, she does have a TED Talk about this. But even she says that the more, import the more important than any tenets or qualities of belonging is the realization that everyone has a different version of what belonging actually looks like. And that is what we need to understand when we want to create a place where we belong and a place where others can find belonging, we must understand that to be a place of belonging means to be a place that can hold differences. And in many ways, I think we as Unitarian Universalist community understand this very well. In the words of my dear colleague, Reverend Alex Jensen, Unitarian Universalists can and do believe many things about life's biggest questions, about God, the greater mystery, about what happens to us when we die. But you can't be a Unitarian Universalist and believe anything you want. You can believe in a lot of things, but there are some fundamental things that bring us and bind us together as a tradition and faith. We are bound together by our commitment to justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, and generosity. We are bound together by, for, and through love. These are commonalities that I believe welcome people in community. They invite us into belonging, but it's not through these similarities that we necessarily find a sense of belonging. I believe that belonging is something we can only find in community when we feel that our differences are valued, that our differences have a place here. As Brene Brown says, belonging is the opposite of fitting in. Fitting in is about assessing a situation and becoming who you need to be to be accepted. Belonging, on the other hand, doesn't require us to change who we are. It requires us to be who we are. And I want to be clear. I'm not preaching this because somehow over the short span of three weeks, I have somehow identified a flaw in our community, not in the slightest. In fact, I've been really moved by countless moments I have witnessed here of people valuing and honoring each other in our differences. I've seen it as we greet one another in the mornings, and especially when I hear us talking about li our lives at coffee hour. No, I wanted to bring this today because it's hard. It's hard work. It touches on inter- and intra-personal struggles that can sometimes go unnamed. And I think it's important that nobody feels they're alone when they're challenged by that difference, when they feel that, ugh, yet also want so badly to offer a place of belonging. 
Most waking hours of my week are spent in a hospital as an interfaith chaplain. And every week I lead five or so spirituality groups on behavioral health units. And I've been doing groups for a while now, so I've gotten into patterns of how I open every group. And it's important at the beginning of every group to say some kind of disclaimer about how the group is an interfaith space, not a place for conversion or convincing, but a place to bring what's meaningful to you. And I've actually, for a couple years now, gotten to the pattern of ending the disclaimer the same way every time. And I say, it is important that we all create a space where we can resonate with the similarities that we hear and value the differences that we bring because it is often through those differences that our discussion can go deeper. I love how that sounds because it's often through those differences that our conversation can go deeper. Wow. I say it at least five times a week, but I have to admit some defeat here. It's often so much easier to allow for similarities to deepen the discussion. Oh, it sounds like you both find comfort in prayer. Wow, there are a lot of people in here that feel it's in uh, strengthening to be part of community. How does it feel to hear that that's so important to others? And we could talk for hours about that. And then there are times when I say, this is powerful. It sounds like each of you bring really different experiences of spirituality and religion. And then whatever questioning prompt I bring next is going to be doing a lot of work. And more often than not, it will lead to silence. Because difference is actually a pretty hard place to meet. I noticed a similar reaction within myself when I met with difference. I often react to it in a way I don't find useful. I notice I'm more likely to remain quiet, sitting back, concerned that I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to push someone away by naming the difference. But that doesn't really work. And what I've come to realize more and more is that it's actively hurting someone's opportunity to feel belonging when I can't value the differences being brought to the table. And, I mean, building a community of belonging certainly doesn't mean we say whatever we want or name everything we see. In fact, it means we choose to be caring and thoughtful about what we say to each other. And it also means that this is a place of accountability. But it's also important to find our language about how we want to value the differences among us. It's important to find a language of belonging that helps us value difference. Because ultimately, we are all bringing difference one way or another. We have different beliefs, backgrounds, different races, ethnicities, ages, different classes and community statuses, different senses of purpose in this world, different longings. I suppose a commonality of all these differences and how they impact each of us individually is that they are impacted by social structures of power. Racism, classism, xenophobia, ableism, sexism. 
and we know how important it is to value how those structures of power impact our lives differently. Just the same, those structures of power that determine how we are impacted by our differences can also shape our longings and what it will look like to feel belonging. Our relationship to power impacts what helps us feel like we belong. And these structures of power thrive in silence. Let us not let them thrive in this community. By continuing to do the work of naming their impact, And perhaps we can find a language of belonging, a language of valuing difference, so that we can be a community where difference invites us deeper into conversation. And if you marvel at the ways we already do this, I wonder, are there ways that we can do it better? Belonging is the work of community in community, and it comes from something so deeply personal within each of us. As we heard in the reading from John O'Donohue today, longing is eternal. It's what constantly qualifies and enlarges our circles of belonging. In this time of transition, as we encounter new beginnings and new people, I invite you to notice what makes you feel like you belong. And perhaps that could lead to some curiosity about what others feel that they belong and what they need to feel that they belong. Ultimately, I think if we can be curious, we can learn what it takes to meet people in all our differences. We can realize that we want to belong because we don't want to feel like we are carrying our troubles and the troubles of this world alone. And that shared longing is something to be curious about. Though in our differences we can sometimes feel alone, in the words of poet Rosemary Watola Tromer, if it's true we are alone, we are alone together. The way blades of grass are alone but exist as a field, sometimes I feel it. The green fuse that ignites us, the wild thrum that unites us, an inner hum that reminds us of our shared humanity. Just as 35 trillion red blood cells join in one body to become one blood, just as 136,000 notes make up one symphony, alone as we are, our small voices weave into one big conversation. Our actions are essential to the one infinite story of what is to be alive. When we feel alone, we belong to the grand communion of those who sometimes feel alone. We are the dust, the dust that hopes, a rising dust, a thrill of dust, the dust that dances in the light with all other dust, the dust that makes the world. Do you know that you belong here? Come, let's be dust together.